Dang it. Okay, very well. And I think I'm unmuted. Is that uh, indeed the case? All right. We can hear Mr. you. Wa Mr. Bois, are you ready to go? Very well. Uh, uh, this hearing will please come to order. Today is March 25th, 2022. Time is now 9.36 a.m. Uh, my name is William Hunker. I've been designated by the board to serve as hearing officer, and I will be advised by the board's counsel from the office of the attorney general, Carlos Soria. May we have a roll call of the board? Yes, sir. <laughs> Member Bitzer, are you present? I am indeed, here. Member Cates, are you present? Yes. Member Duval, are you present? Okay. Uh, Member Garcia. Member slash hearing officer Honker. I am here. Chair Sweena. I'm present. Member Trujillo Davis. Present. Mr. Hearing Officer, we have uh, five members present. Very well. Uh, this is a hearing in EIB 21-56R to consider the proposed amendments to 20.3.20 NMAC medical imaging and radiation therapy licensure due to the COVID-19 public health emergency declared by the governor and following guidelines for public gatherings set out by the Department of Health, this hearing is being held online by the Zoom platform. 20.1.1.306, NMAC does allow for participation via conference, telephone, or other similar device, given all participants are able to hear. If at any point during the hearing technical difficulties arise, Please bring them to my attention and efforts will be made to remedy the situation. The petitioner in this matter is the New Mexico Environment Department Radiation Control Bureau. No other person filed a notice of intent to present technical testimony. There will be designated time for any member of the general public to present non-technical testimony. This hearing will be conducted in accordance with the Open Meetings Act the State Rules Act, the Environmental Improvement Act, the Radiation Protection Act, and with this board's rulemaking procedures. Uh, this hearing is being reported by Teresa Dubois from Albuquerque Re Court Reporting Services. Parties interested in obtaining a copy of the transcript may contact the court reporter directly at the conclusion of the hearing. Copies of the proposed amendments have been available on the department's website and at the department's office, as well as to interested parties upon request. The hearing will be conducted in a fair and impartial manner to assure the relevant facts are fully elicited and to provide a reasonable opportunity for all persons to be heard without making the hearing unreasonably lengthy or burdening the record with unnecessary repetition. The rules of civil procedure and evidence shall not apply to this hearing. As hearing officer, I will make such orders as may be necessary to preserve decorum and protect the orderly hearing process. To that end, I ask that all persons at this hearing please silence their cell phones. During the hearing phase, please be sure to meet, mute yourself unless you wish to speak to help minimize background noise. This hearing shall proceed as follows. Uh, first, board staff will present pre-filed exhibits. Exhibits admitted into evidence are available for, public, for review by the public. Second, all testimony will be taken under oath. Third, as hearing officer, I will rule on any objections to evidence and will admit relevant evidence unless I determine the evidence is incompetent or unduly repetitious. Fourth, any person offering an exhibit shall provide an original to the board administrator 
and a copy to each of the board members and to its legal counsel and shall also provide additional copies for persons attending the hearing. If visual aids are used, legible copies may be, must be submitted for inclusion in the record. Please know that the board will not make copies of any exhibits used at this hearing. Fifth, any person who wishes to make a brief of opening statement before presentation of his or her direct testimony may do so. <clears throat> Sixth, the uh, petitioner will present its direct tes testimony on the proposed amendments and the petitioner's witnesses will stand for cross-examination by the board and any other person in attendance. Uh, seventh, if any other persons, <clears throat> including members of the public, wish to present non-technical testimony about the proposed amendments, they will be testified. They will testify as called upon. If you are a member of the public, please email the board's administrator at pamela.jones at state.nm.us. <clears throat> That's Pamela dot jones at state dot nm dot us to notify us that you intend to present non-technical testimony and include any exhibits being offered. <clears throat> Eighth, because this hearing is being transcribed, please remember that only one person may speak at any one time. Please direct your testimony and answers to questions uh, to the board members. Any person who testifies is subject to cross-examination on the subject matter of his or her testimony and on matters affecting his or her credibility. The petitioner has the option of presenting its witnesses as a panel for purposes of cross-examination. The board members and the hearing officer will cross-examination first, cross-examine first, followed by cross-examination by the public. Please remember to direct all testimony and answers to questions uh, to the board itself, even if someone other than a board member has asked the witness a question. Any person attending the hearing is entitled to conduct whatever cross-examination is required for a full and true disclosure of matters at issue in the hearing. As hearing officer, I may limit cross-examination to avoid harassment, intimidation, needless expenditure of time or undue repetition. Tenth, at the petitioner's discretion and if time permits, rebuttal testimony may be given at the conclusion of the public testimony in the same order as the direct testimony. Eleven, any person who wishes to make a brief closing statement may do so at the conclusion of the hearing in the same order as the direct testimony. We will now proceed. Does the board staff have any exhibits to introduce as evidence? Yes, sir. Mr. Hearing Officer, I have the following exhibits to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is the petition, petition to amend 20.3.20 NMAC of the Radiation Protection Regulations. Exhibit two is the public notice in English. Uh, exhibit three is the public notice in Spanish. Exhibit four is the notice of intent to present technical testimony and exhibits filed. And uh, exhibit five is the written public comment received through last evening, March 24, 2022. Those are all of the exhibits received by the board. They're also posted on the EIB docketed matters page. Okay, we have exhibits one through five. Are there any questions from the board members or objections? Hearing none, uh, exhibits one through five are admitted into the record. If there are no other preliminary matters, we will move to testimony by the petitioner. <coughs> Uh, we will begin with technical testimony by the petitioner. Does the petitioner wish to make a brief opening statement? Yes, hearing officer, I have a brief opening statement. Go ahead, Ms. Napolitano. Okay. Um, 
Good morning, hearing officer Honker, members of the board. I am Mia Napolitano, Assistant General Counsel for the New Mexico Environment Department. Um, with me today is Steven Sanchez, who is the program administrator for the medical imaging and radiation therapy program within the Radiation Control Bureau. And he will provide a summary of his pre-filed written technical testimony in just a bit. Um, also with me today is Chandra Gerard. She's the manager of the clinical imaging systems radiology informatics at the University of New Mexico, and also is the chair of the Medical Imaging and Radiation Therapy Advisory Committee, or MIRTAC. Um, and she will also provide a summary of her pre-filed written te technical testimony. We're here before you today because the Radiation Control Bureau has proposed several amendments to the radiation protection regulations at 20.3.20 of the New Mexico Administrative Code or NMAC. The proposed amendments consist of the addition of a computed tomography or CT license and clarification of the requirements and scope of practice for the provisional license. And the Bureau is also taking this opportunity to clarify existing requirements and fix minor and typographical errors. The New Mexico Environment Department's Radiation Control Bureau uh, requires a medical imaging license for persons operating medical equipment that emits ionizing and non-ionizing radiation pursuant to the Medical Imaging and Radiation Therapy Health and Safety Act. The purpose of the act is to maximize and the protection practicable for the citizens of New Mexico from ionizing and non-ionizing radiation in the practice of medical imaging. The act establishes requirements for appropriate education and training of persons operating medical equipment emitting, emitting ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. The act establishes standards of education and training for the persons who administer medical imaging and radiation therapy procedures. And the act also provides the appropriate ex examination and licensure to those persons. Um, the proposed amendments are located in NMED Exhibit 1 of the Department's Notice of Intent to Present Technical Testimony, which was filed with the board on March 3rd, 2022. Uh, so now I will turn it over to our first witness, uh, Stephen Sanchez, uh, to be sworn in and present a summary of his pre-filed uh, testimony. Very well. Um, Mr. Sanchez, uh, please uh, raise your right hand. So the court reporter can uh, swear you in. Mr. Sanchez, do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, go ahead. Okay. Please state your name for the record. Steven Sanchez. And where are you currently employed? I'm currently employed at the New Mexico Environment Department, Radiation Control Bureau, Medical Imaging and Radiation Therapy Program, I'm the administrator. And how long have you been employed by the New Mexico Environment Department? I've been employed by 23 years at the department. And what is your current position with the department? I am the program administrator for the medical imaging and radiation therapy program. And how long have you held that position? I've held that position 22 years. And can you please describe your typical duties and responsibilities in that position? I'm solely responsible for the administration of the professional licensure requirements for all the medical imaging and radiation therapy technology, technologists that are employed in the state, the requirements are that they have to have an original certificate of licensure posted at each place of employment prior to being able to perform any procedures. So my main function is that the, the processing of applicants and the mailing and distribution of the original certificates I also do communication with um, the regulated community with the professional society, such as the American Society of Radiologic Technologists and, this, and any other uh, duties. I'm 
is if we have a one person show for the whole state, we have 2,900 people licensed currently in New Mexico and it continues to grow. Great. And did you pre-file your resume in this matter as NMBD Exhibit 3 on March 3rd, 2022? Yes. And did you pre-file written technical testimony in this matter as NMBD Exhibit 2 on March 3rd, 2022? Yes. Would you like to make any changes or corrections to your pre-filed written technical testimony? No, thank you. Do you adopt your pre-filed written technical testimony? I do. Um, so could you just please briefly explain to the board why the Bureau is proposing amendments to 20.3.20 and MAC? We're proposing this amendment to add a computer tomography CT license because as it's a very popular diagnostic tool available to at most medical imaging facilities, the hospitals, and the that type of medical procedure emits ionizing radiation. So the department feels that to keep the public safe, it's it's a, a good idea to make sure that there's minimal standards for individuals who are operating and performing that procedure, so that they can uh, perform that procedure with as minimal amount of emitting ionizing radiation to that patient while they're doing the diagnostic imaging. And also we're going to take this opportunity to make a correction to the provisional license section of 20.3.20 NMAC so that we can make that correction as, as you stated, other minor topic, uh, typing errors or such things as that. And um, how did the Bureau inform the members of the public and the stakeholders of these proposed changes to 20.3.20 and MAC? Well, we did the required posting and we placed an ad in the, in the Albuquerque Journal that ran in the legal notice section. And we posted them in the environment, the main building at the Reynolds building and the field office in the Española Environment Department. We were not able to post at the Springer building in Albuquerque due to its closing, but we did all the required uh, notices. In addition to that, we contacted the individuals with uh, the State Society of, uh, of, Medical, of Medical Imaging Radiology Technologists, and they announced it. Also, UNM announced it, who's, who's been involved in, in helping with this. Did the Bureau meet the public notice requirements contained in 20.1.1.301 and MAC? We did. And did the Bureau receive comments or concerns from the members of the public or stakeholders regarding the proposed amendments? No. And could you please just provide a summary of the proposed amendments to 20.3.20 and MAC of the Radiation Protection Regulations? Yes. The definition of modality was expanded to include computer tomography and all its subsection, subspecialties. Also under section 20.3.20101, the Bureau added the different scopes of practice for a computer tomography license. Chandra, who will speak of this later on as she gives her testimony, the Bureau added computer tomography ART to section 20.3.20 NMAC since ART, which stands for American Registry Radiologic Technologist, is a medical imaging and radiation therapy credentialing organization for computed tomography. The Bureau also added computer tomography to section 20.3.20301 NMAC, so it's clear but the medical imaging and radiation therapy credentials for certificates are required for a CT license. The Bureau added computer tomography license to section 20.3.20.320 and MAC and also clarifies the licensure terms for a license. The Bureau also like to remove language recording regarding the delayed effect date to, of June 30, 2019 
in 2018 when the current regulations were promulgated, this section provided for a delayed effective date of June 30, 2019 for individuals who utilizes non-ionizing radiation to meet the regulatory requirements imposed by the section. Since June 30, 2019 has passed, the Bureau proposes to remove language regarding the requirements surrounding the delayed effective date. The Bureau proposed to clarify the requirements for a provisional license by removing the phrase is currently licensed by the department and replace that phrase with the following sentence. A provisional license to practice medical imaging and radiation therapy utilizing ionizing radiation will not be issued to individuals who are not already licensed by the department in one of the modalities that utilizes ionizing radiation. The addition, this addition makes clear that an applicant for provisional license to practice medical imaging or radiation therapy utilizing ionizing radiation must already be licensed by the department in one of the modalities that utilizes ionizing radiation in order to ensure patient safety. These amendments will help clarify the requirements for obtaining a provisional license so there is less confusion among the regulated community. Finally, under section 20.3.20.330 and map, the Bureau proposes to add or with an active provisional license in the clear, in order to clarify existing Bureau business practice with regards to the continuing education requirements. Great, um, thanks. Um, so members of the board, hearing office, officer Honker, do you have any questions um, for Stephen? Do the board members have any any questions for uh, Mr. Sanchez? Yes, Vice Chair Trujillo Davis. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Sanchez. I, I only have a couple of questions. Uh, did um, did you receive any opposition to these changes? Member Davis, not to my knowledge. We did not receive any opposition to this. And um, also, does this rule, uh, or I'm sorry, does the, do these changes uh, fall in line with other states? Uh, how do they compare with our neighboring states? Member David, not all states require a medical imaging licensure, so it's difficult to determine which states require specific licensures. However, I believe that New Mexico will be one of the one of the first to actually have a, a computer tomography license in effect. Okay, um, that's interesting. Uh, I may have some more follow-up questions later, but I'm, I'm done for now. Thank you, sir, for taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you, Member. Uh, member Bitzer. relearn where the unmute button is each time we change venues so sorry um yes sir thank you um for your testimony did you get a chance to review the letters that came to the board i guess they were sent to us last night there were like five of them um uh, uh, offering uh their perspectives folks in the field in the industry and uh, folks from unm did you get a chance to see those letters at all I didn't actually see those letters. However, I was in communication with Chandra. She was uh, summarized them in discussion of what those letters were going to contain and the reason for them. I, I believe they were all in support of this CT, for adding a CT license in New Mexico, if I'm not mistaken. That was my that was my impression. By and large, I couldn't really tell what UNM wanted in terms of an action item. They didn't. Yeah, they, didn't um, they they're very much in support. UNM is very much in support of, of this license. Uh, they were one of the first uh, parties that approached the department and the advisory council to request such a specific type of licensure. It also falls in line with one of their programs that they have available for as an educational programs and diagnostic imaging. 
Yeah, that, that I did see. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Are there any other questions from board members for Mr. Sanchez? I have a quick question. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Hearing Officer. Um, thank you, Mr. Sanchez. I'm trying to find my screen with you on there. <laughs> oh, uh, for your testimony, appreciate um, the information uh, that you provided us. Uh, I guess back to um, what member or Vice Chair Trujillo Davis was uh, asking about is, so in in this particular area, do you know if there, um, could you just read, if you know, share what other, um, I guess maybe businesses or industries um, have been involved? Has there been in any engagement from them or feedback? There's other, been, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, other than UNM is what I was going to say. Yes, we've had uh, several discussions with, especially rural hospitals, because when we began this the process, a uh, big concern for having such a license was for individuals to have the ability in rural areas to be able to get their CT clinical competencies, the minimum requirement in order for them to sit for the exam and to get certified and registered by the ART. But since that time, there has been, this problem has taken care of itself because the availability of CT equipment has expanded greatly to CT areas. So the problem of not being able to complete their competencies has been eliminated. So that was the main concern that we had with the hospitals in the rural areas. As far as the other hospitals in the state, they're very looking forward to it because this will help them in being able to have additional staff for individuals to be able to, to perform the CT procedures because currently CT is probably one of the most uh, prescribed diagnostic imaging tools for, it's really helped out a lot for COVID because of the looking at images of the lungs so they're really in favor. The hospitals are really in favor of this. Currently, they're having a difficult time keeping up with the demand for medical imaging procedures involving CT. Um, in fact, so much so that a lot of the new applicants, I would say more applicants for medical imaging license come from out of state now than they do from in-state because of the shortages that's being imposed by COVID. Okay. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate you coming to our board this morning. Thank you. Any further questions from board members? Uh, uh, Member Bitzer. Thank you. Um, I'm familiar with the American Society of Radiologic Technologists, uh, has their national headquarters up here in Terrace Canyon, basically. Um, I served on the Practice Standards Advisory Council a number of years ago um, as the, the layman uh, member of the board. It was like a nine member board, if I recall. Um, but I wasn't familiar with the, with the other body that you were talking about, the uh, certifying body, ARRT. Uh, yes. what's, the, what's, the, what's the relationship between ASRT and ARRT? Uh, the relationship is one is a you mentioned the ASRT that's the professional society for the medical imaging technologists radiation therapy technologists um, whereas the A American Registry of Radiologic Technologists is the actually certified national certifying and registering organization that provides that creates the examinations that uh, that the that the individuals take in order to prove that they met the minimal education requirements and to that they were able to pass their exam so that they are registered and certified. Anybody can look into their credentials at the ART.org website and see that the, if the individual is currently certified and registered. But the main difference is one is a society and the other is a, is a credentialing. Basically, they provide the examination. They have the continuing education requirements so that 
they continue to to learn that as their profession changes. So do they collaborate then as like sister organizations? They do quite a bit. There, in fact, there's a lot of um, discussions with the society and the ART because like you mentioned, you were in the on the general public's seat of the ASRT for their practice standards. They do uh, contact and are in close contact with each other to discuss potential changes or, or new types of continuing education requirements. And I'm sure other issues that I'm not aware of, but I do know that they are in close contact with the ART. Yeah, CT I don't think was even a category when I, when I served. So I think the technology has come a long way. So thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Are there any other questions from board members for Mr. Sanchez? Seeing none, uh, does anyone else, including the audience, wish to cross-examine cross Mr. Sanchez? Seeing and hearing none, uh, thank you, Mr. Sanchez. Uh, Ms. Napolitano, you want to introduce your next witness? Our next witness will be Chandra Gerard. Um, please. Um, oh. uh, uh, Ms. Gerard, uh, could you uh, raise your right hand and so that the uh, court reporter can swear you in? Ms. Gerard, do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Please state your name for the record. Uh, my name is Chandra Gerard. Where are you currently employed? University of New Mexico Hospitals. How long have you been employed by the University of New Mexico Hospitals? Um, both between UNM and UNM hospitals about 15 years. Um, and what is your uh, current position with the University of New Mexico? Um, currently, I'm the manager of clinical imaging systems for radiology informatics. And how long have you held that position? Uh, two years and about eight months. Can you please describe your typical duties and responsibilities in your position? Absolutely. So, I uh, typically do project management for a variety of project types, including upgrades, implementations, workflow solutions, and cybersecurity compliance. I also translate the clinical needs into IT or informatics lexicon, as well as document overall workflow processes. I currently manage a group of seven imaging analysts and one tech customer support. Uh, the team, they administrate the picture archive and communication system or the PAC system used to archive all radiology images acquired at both UNM hospitals as well as Sandoval Regional Medical Center. Uh, we also administrate about 30 other applications used for voice dictation, image post-processing and so forth. And are you also, are you a member of the or of the MIRTAC? Yes. And how long have you been a member of the MIRTAC? Uh, four years. And did you pre-file your resume in this matter as NMED Exhibit 5 on March 3rd, 2022? Yes. And did you pre-file written technical testimony in this matter as NMED Exhibit 4 on March 3rd, 2022? Yes. And would you like to make any changes or corrections to your pre-filed written technical testimony? No. Do you adopt your pre-filed written te technical testimony? Yes. Now, could you uh, please explain what commuted, computed tomography is and how it got started? Absolutely. Um, so computed tomography or CT was developed in the early 1970s. CT is a tool that provides a more comprehensive view of the body than a single x-ray or radiograph can. CTs are different because ra rather than acquiring a single image as you would in an x-ray, you are imaging an entire volume of anatomy. The entire volume of anatomy can be manipulated by the computer after the fact to show the anatomy differently, meaning you can have the scan demonstrate the soft tissues of the body on one of the resultant series, the bones, the lungs, all of this can be done from the original scan without having to rescan the patient multiple times. 
CTs can also, also allow you to see the body internally and have a better idea of where something is anatomically. So you can view the body from front to back, side to side, oblique. Um, you can do 3D reformats. There's a lot of additional uh, functionality that CT can provide. And what are the risks of computed tomography, which utilizes ionizing radiation? So risks for computed tomography are most noted in the possibility of receiving too much radiation dose in a given scan. Um, there's really two different sort of outcomes that you can have. You can have a short-term outcome, which has been seen in some cases where patients actually have a version of skin burns. Um, you can also have some patients experience things like hair loss. There's been um, some reported cases of that uh, out of California. You can also have long-term effects um, such as cataracts, cancer, and those are really due to cumulative effects of radiation dose over the life of the patient. Um, I did include a PubMed link in my testimony that takes you to a variety of articles that can walk you through that. So how do you, do, how do you reduce risks associated with computed tomography? So there, there's a lot of different ways to do this. I'll keep it brief though for this uh, hearing, um, but basically reducing risk uh, in obtaining computed tomography exams are not just localized to the imaging technologists performing the scans themselves, um, but can also provide, uh, reside rather in the practice of the ordering provider. Um, that is definitely outside the scope of the testimony, but does play a big part in reducing the overall number of CTs that patients receive. There may be other scans that could be selected such as ultrasound or MRI. Uh, radiation reduction is also obtained by enhancements in the computed tomography technology itself, so the actual scanner. Um, that is uh, something that the vendor tends to take ownership of, is how to make the best type of CT to acquire the images the fastest, the least amount of radiation dose, um, and that sort of safety protocols that they have in place. Additionally, we do have an entire field of professionals called medical physicists that work through the um, AAPM, which is their uh, society to help with reduction of radiation to the patient, especially with computed tomography in both an adult and pediatric population. Okay. Thank you. So why is it important to license individuals that utilize CT scanners? So although systems are becoming more controlled with how much radiation can be output, that is not always enough to ensure the equipment is being used by the appropriate personnel. Adding a CT license will help with possible encroachment of other professions wishing to perform medical imaging, um, such as CT scans uh, from folks such as nursing, PAs, we have seen that, but having this license would um, basically obviate that. They would not be able to pursue that. Um, in their scope of practice. There are also reimbursements associated with some professions having the certified technologist or professional actually doing the imaging or whatever it is on the patient themselves. Um, so that plays a part in having a CT license and making sure that we've got um, the technologist registered correctly. And I also like to liken this to how other certified professionals are in other aspects of medical profession um, that perform what is expected by the patient. A patient. For example, a patient who needs to see a heart specialist, they would expect to see a cardiologist. The cardiologist would be expected to be educationally prepared and clinically competent. Patients should not have a different experience when getting their medical imaging, meaning if they are needing someone that can perform an x-ray, a DEXA scan, a CT scan, an MRI, they should have that technologist be certified and trained in that specialty. And, um... Now, Mr. Sanchez already provided the board with a summary of the proposed changes to 20.3.20 NMAC. Um, however, if you could just briefly provide a summary of the amendments that discuss the CT licensure, just, yeah, just briefly. Sure. Yeah, um, yeah so as discussed, uh, we were advocating for having the addition of a dedicated CT license that would enable technologists, regardless of, regardless of their primary pathway to perform diagnostic CT in the state, um, this would be, though, for technologists that hold the American Registry of Radiologic Technologists CT credentials, or the ARRTCT. Um, the MIRTAC also felt that we did not want to move forward with the Nuclear Medicine Technology Certification Board CT credential because the rigor um, of that board certification is not to the standard that we would like to have for someone performing a diagnostic CT, and I did include um, that information, a comparison in my testimony. 
right. Um, yeah, I believe that's NMAD exhibit 21 is that comparison table that um, Chandra is referring to. Um, okay, great. Thank you for that. Um, the members of the board hearing officer Honker, do you have any questions for Chandra? Do members of the board have any questions for Ms. Gerard? <laughs> Chair Sweena, go to you first. Thank you, Member Honker. I just wanted to thank you, Ms. Gerard, for her testimony. Um, it provides us uh, some good um, perspective of um, how these roles uh, fit in to your work. Uh, so I just wanted to say that I didn't know if um, anybody else had any comments. Thanks. Thank you. Member Bitzer. I just wanted to compliment you on your uh, choice of backgrounds for your uh, for your Zoom. That looks like ionizing radiation <laughs> circa what, the North Pole? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah, if, you, if you're uh, if you're conversant with that. I, it was on my bucket list to go see Australis and Borealis. Um, am I going to see different colors at the North Pole than the South Pole? I don't know. I think it's dedicated by the magnetic fields. And yeah, it's, yeah, yeah there's the, like the, the north attracting part of the yeah. ion or creating one type of ionizing radiation and the south is attracting another. It's just, I guess I'll find out eventually if I can ever get out of the country again. But yeah, so you, you you sort of indirectly brought it up with that great uh, background. So I just, I've been dying to figure that one out and I don't know, but that's all I have. Thank you for your expert testimony. Absolutely, thank you. Any other questions uh, for Ms. Gerard from the board members? Uh, Vice Chair Trujillo Davis. Good morning, Ms. Gerard. Thank you for your, for your testimony and, and um, for shedding some light on this issue for us. Um, I, I just have one quick question. Uh, you mentioned uh, issues that uh, had been documented out of California, and I'm curious if there has been any documented in New Mexico or if, if this is just a, a, a preemptive uh, kind of approach to any issues happening here. Yeah, at this time, we have not had any significant reports of over radiation of a patient using computed tomography. Um, that is a big reason that we want to push for this license is because it will require anyone performing imaging to have that base information of how to actually operate the, the machine itself. Um, because we do, like you just said, want to be preemptive and not, not run into that sort of situation moving forward. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, any, any further questions from the board? Uh, Member Cates. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, um, uh, Ms. Gerard, um, some of the written testimony um, called for expediting this decision or, you know, this change. Um, do you, uh, and forgive me if I miss this, do you feel some urgency around the issue? Yes, absolutely. Um, right now we are in a significant CT technology shortage in the state. Um, due to the pandemic, a lot of technologists have left to do travel work and other sorts of things. Hmm. Um, right now, by not having a CT license that actually tells you which credentials qualify for performing diagnostic CT, we have basically removed all nuclear medicine technologists that have ARRT CT license um, from not being able to perform diagnostic CT. So if we're able to get this licensure um, in as soon as possible, we've been trying to get this in for several years now. Um, those that are nuclear medicine primary certified, but also have the correct CT certification from the ARRT would then be able to help in performing diagnostic CT in the state. Yep. All right. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Any other questions from board members? Uh, seeing none, uh, does anyone else uh, present have any questions for this witness? I have one. Yes, could you identify yourself, please? Uh, John Love, CTMRI manager with Presbyterian Hospital. Hi, John. Um, hello, good morning. Um, I just want to put my support to this and like like Miss um, like Sandra said, we currently are in a state where 
we've lost a lot of CT techs and we have a lot of nuclear medicine techs that are CT certified underneath the ART who we had to let go because of the language before this amendment would not allow them to do CT scans because they weren't coming on underneath radiology or x-ray. So with these amendments, we will be able to allow several individuals to come back to CT. They hold a CT license from the ART and um, perform CT and, and get back into the workforce. So we really are pushing to, to have this go through and support it. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Dubois, did you get uh, the commenter's name? Yes, I, sir, I did. I could give it again if you need it. It's John Love. John Love, okay. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Love. Any any other questions uh, for Ms. Gerard? Seeing and hearing none, uh, thank you very much, Ms. Gerard. Uh, Ms. Napolitano, uh, do you have any other witnesses? Uh, no other witnesses. Um, so I would like to you know, move the admission of NMED exhibits one through 22 into the record and make those part of the administrative record in this matter. Um, and I'm ready to give a brief closing unless um, you have anything else. Um, well, let's, let's uh, consider uh, NMED exhibits one through 22. Is there an, any objection from, uh, to admitting those? into the record. Seeing and hearing none, I will admit those into the record. Um, now, a question for Councillor Soloria is, so uh, should NMED's closing be now or, or do we wanna take public comment first? That's at your discretion, Chair. Um, you can, they, if, if they wanna offer it now, they can. If, you, if they prefer it and you would allow it, they can wait till after public comment, but it's at your discretion. Okay, uh, uh, Ms. Napolitano, do you have a preference? <laughs> no, we, we could do public comment first before. Okay, yeah. very well, okay. So um, we will now hear non-technical testimony and written statements from members of the public. All testimony must be limited to the proposed amendments. Uh, the board is unable to take any testimony testimony unrelated to pr the proposed amendments. Uh, and as, as I requested earlier, uh, uh, you should notify uh, uh, Ms. Jones if, if you have comments. And Ms. Jones, uh, do we have any uh, public testimony uh, requests that you've received? I've, I've not received any uh, requests to, to uh, make oral public comment this morning. If there is someone within the, the participants right now that wishes to, please please indicate that to me in the chat and we will get you unmuted and let you make comment. I, I think I saw Joanna Fair raise her hand. Yes, sir, that's correct. Ms. Fair, can you unmute? Yes, hello. Thank you very much, members of the board, for allowing me to speak. Uh, my uh, name just a moment, Ms. Fair. Uh, could you raise your right hand and so that the court reporter can swear you in? Absolutely. Ms. Fair, do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please speak slowly. Thank you. Go ahead. Thanks. Good morning, members of the board. Uh, my name is Dr. Joanna Fair. I am a radiologist and nuclear medicine physician at the University of New Mexico. I'm a professor and have been uh, on the faculty here for almost 13 years. Uh, I was the section chief of nuclear medicine for 10 years, and I am currently still the vice chair of academic affairs in the Department of Radiology. I'm board certified both in radiology and in nuclear medicine, and I want to speak in favor of these amendments. Um, as you can tell, I've worked in radiology and nuclear medicine for an extended period of time. Um, I think one of the things that was alluded to 
sort of closer to the end of this discussion uh, was the impact on our nuclear medicine technologists. So our nuclear medicine technologists have a Bachelor of Science in Radiologic Sciences with a specialization in nuclear medicine. And then many of them do go on to obtain a CT certification, which is an additional year of training and are ARRT certified in CT. As was mentioned, however, because they are not ARRTR, um, they are currently unable to perform diagnostic CT examinations in the state of New Mexico. Um, this creates two challenges, one that was referred to um, by Mr. Love um, with the shortage of CT technologists. We have fully trained, fully qualified individuals who could assist with CT and are, are currently unable to do so. Um, and in addition, uh, as you may be aware, uh, much of the work that we do in nuclear medicine is in PET CT, which is for diagnosis of cancer. And uh, there's a CT component of that currently, um, though they are not able to do a full diagnostic CT, uh, which can be a benefit to the patient to be able to have both at once. You can imagine that the patient comes in, needs a CT scan, also needs a PET, um, and currently, if they need a CT scan, they have to go to another scanner, maybe come back on another day, um, have sort of a different examination because the tech that's doing the PET CT isn't certified to do a diagnostic CT. And in the circumstance where the nuclear medicine technologist who is CT trained and ARRT CT could do both examinations on the same scanner um, that really substantially increases our patient satisfaction and the patient experience in being able to get both of those examinations at that same time. And so um, there's really those two reasons relating to our nuclear medicine service where it would be very beneficial for these technologists who are fully trained to be able to perform diagnostic CT. Um, in addition to, I think I, I really do also agree with the arguments that were made about CT certification really being different and unique from uh, X-ray certification, the higher level of radiation that's associated with CT and the importance from a patient safety standpoint to have this additional certification for folks who are doing CT. And so I just wanted to speak um, you know, to all of those reasons uh, for, for bringing, this, uh, bringing this forward. Thank you, Dr. Fair. Um, uh, board members have questions for Dr. Fair. Uh, Vice Chair uh, Trujillo Davis. Uh, yes, thank you, Dr. Fair. Um, my question was just about the, the doubling up of, of being able to take care of two things at one time. Would that uh, potentially reduce costs for patients? Um, the cost part is complicated because if it's a separate examination, it may have a separate cost, but it certainly improves the patient convenience in terms of being able to potentially do both exams at the same time on the same scanner um, instead of having to be scheduled at another time or another place uh, for, for the separate diagnostic CT. And um, just one follow up there, does that, uh, is there currently a, a, any backlog or difficulty scheduling patients? Uh, like what's, what kind of wait time do patients face for these types of scans? Um, that's a great question. I think actually, um, I, I see that Dr. Megan Carey Island, who is our a nuclear medicine, I'm sorry, who is our radiology executive director is on the call and she might be able to actually speak a little bit more um, to patient wait times. Um, Chandra might be able to as well. I don't know if Megan's able to speak right now or Chandra. Um, if not, that's okay. We can wait till- uh, There's Megan. <laughs> but thank you for, for answering my questions. Good morning. Um, I don't know if I needed to, to log in or or raise my right hand, okay. um, but to answer your question uh, that, that um, you asked Dr. Fair, um, right, yes. Can I, can I interrupt? Can we have this, yes. um, since you're, you'll be offering comment, if you can have Mr. Boss, where you in? Can we proceed? Yes. Thank you. Yes. yes. <laughs> 
Yes, would you raise your right hand so our court reporter can swear you in? You swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Okay, go ahead. Wonderful. Thank you all. Um, thank you, board and members that are present today. Um, to answer the question posed to Dr. Fair, um, I can only speak to University Hospital at this moment, of course, um, but in speaking with colleagues um, across the state and, and within the city, um, I think we're in similar positions. There are definitely what we would consider backlogs of patients waiting to get exams um, because of the shortage of technologists and the inability for us to have technologists who are certified by the ARRT perform diagnostic CT. Um, we do have wait times for patients to receive diagnostic CTs at this time. Um, passing of these amendments would definitely um, benefit patients in that we would be able to move forward with some of these diagnostic exams at the time that they're here for other things. And it would allow us to employ technologists that have an ARRT certification in the CT area um, uh, to perform diagnostic CT if necessary. So this would be of benefit to patients as well. Thank you. Oh, uh, do any other Absolutely. board members have questions for either one of these witnesses? Seeing none, does anybody else have any questions for uh, either one of these witnesses? Okay, uh, seeing and hearing none, do we, do we have any other uh, uh, members of the public that we wish to make a comment? Yes, Mr. Hearing Officer, a couple more. First on the list is Shana Elmond. Um, Ms. Elmond, if you could unmute. Hello, my name is Dr. Shana Elman. Uh, I am also... Uh, Hold on. Could, you, could you raise your right hand and, and have, we'll have the court reporters where you are. Yes. Just give me a moment, I need to write your name down. Sure. Where are you? There you are. <laughs> okay. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Please speak slowly. Thank you. Go ahead. Great. Thank you for, um, for all the comments that have proceeded and for, for hearing this important um, topic. Um, I am a nuclear medicine physician and radiologist at the University of New Mexico. Um, I work with Dr. Fair and with uh, Chandra, who you already heard from, um, as well as uh, Megan Carey. I'm um, I'm also the nuclear medicine chief, um, and I have been at the University of New Mexico for three years. Um, I want to support everything that has been said um, and then add a few additional comments. Um, first off, there was a question earlier to Stephen Sanchez about what other states do. Um, and this is actually not, we will not be one of the first states to recognize CT. Uh, licensure for diagnostic CT. Um, I'm trying to collate quickly on the Society of Nuclear Medicine and Molecular Imaging website advocacy page. They have a list of all 50 states and what the current um, licensure um, requirements and um, scope of practice is. And so I'm trying to collate that quickly on a clunky computer. So I will submit that by the end um, of the hearing. Um, but many states do allow exactly what we are asking for already. Um, in Washington state where I trained, our um, nuclear medicine technologists did perform diagnostic CT when they were um, certified under ART, which is what we're requesting. Um, and this allowed for improved uh, throughput because as has already been discussed, patients were able to get their diagnostic CT and their PET CT at the same time. This also potentially can lead to reduced radiation doses for the patients because when they are getting a diagnostic CT at the same time as the PET CT, we would apply a special protocol to reduce the radiation dose that they're getting for the um, limited CT that is obtained with the PET scan. 
Um, also, when we're interpreting the exams, <clears throat> it can really improve our ability to diagnose things confidently when we are able to review both the diagnostic quality CT at the same time as the PET CT, combining information from physiologic um, metabolism with the actual anatomic imaging and the ability to look at the diagnostic CT really improves our ability to see those anatomic structures. Um, <clears throat> in addition to you know, convenience to the patient, I think it also um, does minimally reduce the cost as was asked before when they can, uh, it gets charged a little bit differently when the CT is performed at the same time. Um, and um, certainly reduces the backflow by allowing those spaces that are currently taken up by diagnostic CTs that could be done at the same time, um, opening up those spaces for other patients to be able to get CTs. Um, I do think it also would be helpful in terms of retention for our state and being able to offer to the technologists the ability to practice within the entire scope of what they have been trained to do. Um, and, and as everyone has alluded to, we definitely are in a shortage of techs and we don't wanna lose any to other states who already allow this uh, to be done. So uh, with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Hey, thank you, Dr. Elman. Does, uh, do the board members have any questions for Dr. Elman? Uh, Vice Chair Tuhio Davis. I actually don't have any questions, uh, and this may be a question more for Ms. Solaria, but um, would, uh, would it be appropriate to ask uh, NMED to submit into evidence for the record a copy of the states that require this type of licensure? Um, I, I, it doesn't sound like we have a lot of opposition to it, but it seems like it would be something good to have within the record. Um, you could leave the record open to give parties an opportunity to do that. It did sound like um, Dr. Elman offered to submit that as part of what would be essentially public comment, and that could be considered part of the record. Um, the only way that you could request the party to um, furnish information after the fact is if we leave the record open for, for a time period to do that, which is an option. I just don't know if you want to do it, do that. Um, I think more of my concern was, uh, you know, we do get a lot of public comment, but as far as uh, making sure that uh, the evidence that is submitted is in fact uh, true uh, and that it, it, it does meet quality um, control standards if we have them, but um, that it has been at least looked over and, and it is in fact um, factual. Uh, so that was, that was more of my, my concern in asking NMED to also submit it. Um, I can let Ms. Napolitano perhaps speak to that issue. Um, just note, I see an email. It's chair, oh, chair is back on. Sorry, I just saw your email. Okay. Um, yeah, if, if Ms. Napolitano wants to respond to that, um, she can go right ahead. I mean, we could submit it. It's in terms of, you know, I don't, I certainly am not an expert with CTs. So in terms of me verifying the accuracy of this document, I don't think I could do that. Um, I, um, I would turn to probably Chandra or Dr. Elman <laughs> to verify that because they are the experts with this. Um, but I don't I guess have an I... issue with, with submitting it at a late, I, I don't have an issue with submitting it as an exhibit. Um, if, if the board would like that, I can I can certainly do that. And I, just to clarify, I don't think that it would not be a factual document. I just wanna make sure that whoever's submitting it retrieves a document from a reliable source. And uh, I'm, I'm assuming there's a an organization uh, that has been mentioned several times that keeps track of, of where this is coming from. So that was really the root of my, my question there. Yeah, and, and Chair, um, and excuse me, Member <laughs> Trujillo Davis, um, I think if the parties are public offer to um, submit that information um, before the close of this hearing, that the board is well within its discretion to consider it and then just give it the weight it deems appropriate based on um, whatever indices of credibility are on the face of that information. 
I think that sounds like it might be a easier approach. Okay, a uh, uh, question for Dr. Elman. So you you said you were you were uh, retrieving this information right now. So uh, do you have a time estimate as to when you could uh, submit that for our record? I would hope within the hour. Okay, very good. And um, uh, Pamela Jones forwarded me her email address and said that she would forward along to board members. Okay, very good. Uh, are there any other questions for doc, Dr. Elman? Any questions from the public for Dr. Elman? I see a hand raised. It says Megan. Uh, so uh, you have you have a question for Dr. Elman? And you need I need your last name, please. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting. I, I think she needs to be unmuted too. Pam. Better? Yes. My last name is my last name is Reza, R-E-Z-A. And it um I work at New Mexico Cancer Center. Great. <laughs> Do I need to swear her in? Are you, are you are you providing testimony or are you asking a question? I was actually going to just make a, a small comment. Okay, well, in that case, please raise your right hand and uh, our court reporter will uh, swear you in. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. And please speak slowly. My my comment was based on what um, Dr. Elman had stated, as well as um, Ms. Davis's question. Um, I do already have our surrounding states um, scope of practice with CT. I have those documents as far as when it comes to Arizona, Colorado, as well as California and my home state, Illinois. Those were the four that I had pulled up on my own. So if it would be helpful at all for me to submit those to you, I do have CT listed as a scope of practice for all of those states. That was my only comment. Just trying to be a little helpful. Yes, yes, yeah. I think that would be helpful. So if you could email that uh, sure. as soon as possible to, to uh, Pam Jones. Sure thing. Thank you. Okay, are there other questions for uh, Dr. Elman? Seeing and hearing none, uh, Pam, do we have any other public comment? We do, we have two more. Uh, and the first would be Rebecca Blakely. Miss Blakely, if you can, uh, oh, there she is, unmute. And uh, court reporter will take it from here. Okay, Miss Blakely, if you could raise your right hand, uh, court reporter will swear you in. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And please speak slowly. Thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Blankley. Uh, good morning, board members. I'm uh, happy to speak here today, and thank you for holding this meeting. As Anna said, it's been a long time coming. Uh, what I want to address today is the educational component of CT licensure. Um, it was talked about earlier on the meeting today that the difference between the ASRT is our society and the ARRT is our credentialing body. In 2018, the credentialing body of the ARRT started a requirement of an educational component to be eligible to sit for board certification for CT. When we move towards, or if indeed this is voted in today, to move towards certification for CT in our state, by requiring that educational component, it really does ensure that we have a um, trained CT technologist performing the scans. The four categories that the ARRT has now required of CT, of really x-ray technologists or nuclear medicine technologists sitting for the board, are patient care, 
safety, image production, and procedures. Therefore, any CT tech that would be performing those diagnostic scans in our state would be trained in those four areas. Um, I submitted our training program yesterday, which is a one year in duration, um, let's say academic program, but there's a myriad of other opportunities that these technologists could obtain this education to be eligible to, eligible to sit for the board. By being trained, again, they are reviewing all the components of the radiation dose per procedure. They're reviewing how to minimize repeats, therefore um, reducing radiation dose to a patient. They are um, well-versed on selecting correct exams, therefore re um, minimizing repeats again. And they're really much more well-trained to be able to deliver um, safe and effective CT scans. It's been also mentioned on this meeting today of our shortage in our state. One, let's say trend is to take an x-ray technologist that has just graduated and train them in CT. Although a great opportunity for a, um, a x-ray technologist that's just graduated x-ray school, we certainly advocate for that newly graduate to be educated in the field of CT in order to perform safe and effective CT scans. Again, by moving forward with this licensure, we would really um, ensure that all technologists would be certified. It is my under, I mean, educated and certified. It is my understanding that it won't minimize the workforce because these technologists will be able to obtain a provisional license. And then once they start obtaining their competencies, they have to sit for the board certification within two years by the ARRT. So again, the educational component to me as an educator, the director of the RADSI program at UNM is key to again, allowing safe and effective tech, um, procedures to really be in place for technologists performing these CT scans for our citizens of New Mexico. We certainly advocate for CT licensure for the state of New Mexico. Thank you, Ms. Blankley. Are there any questions from the board for Ms. Blankley? Yes, Vice Chair uh, Davis. Apologize, I couldn't find my, my mouse there. Um, uh, just a quick question. Uh, and, um, and if you can't uh, answer this, that's a-okay. I'm curious about the um, the cost uh, to catch up uh, these employees that are um, already uh, or, or who are who will be taking the educational component of this. Is that cost incurred by the employee or by the employer? Um, that's a really good question. I can answer that. Um, both, I will say. So some employers do allow for a continuing education to be part of their hiring practice, UNM being one of them. Um, and there's a myriad of opportunities for technologists to meet these requirements. They can be as cheap as $200 to obtain some, um, let's say, online modules with some testing opportunities to learn these requirements by the ART to take the board, or they could come to our program, which is a one year in duration, six courses throughout that one year duration, which we teach both an academic and a clinical course. So again, myriad of opportunities, therefore the impact of the financial burden, either on the technologist or again, by the institution varies. Okay, thank you for, for that, I appreciate it. And thank you for taking time to talk to us. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the board members? Seeing none, uh, uh, does anyone else present have any questions for Ms. Blankley? Seeing and hearing none, uh, thank you, Ms. Blankley. And uh, Ms. Jones, there's, there's another comment. Uh, yes, Mr. Hearing Officer, Melissa Ortega would like to make comment. Ms. Ortega? Hi, good morning. Uh, Ms. Ortega, could you raise your right hand and a court reporter will uh, swear you in. Good 
Good morning. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Ortega. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good morning. Thank you all for, for being here and for listening. Um, I work at New Mexico Cancer Center. I'm the radiology manager there. Um, I've been there for about 15 years. I just wanted to make comments and uh, speak in favor of these changes as well. Um, I've had the opportunity, uh, first I'm a CT tech and x-ray tech also, and I've had the opportunity to work hand in hand with other nuclear medicine technologists. Um, we do have a PET CT machine, so we do PET scans and diagnostic CT scans for our uh, cancer patients. And um, a few of the nuke med techs have gone above and beyond to get their comps for CT, have taken their ART CT boards as well. Um, unfortunately, they have not been able to work alone in that aspect. Um, it would be very helpful to be able to utilize them in that way. And um, it would be great for patient care as well. So I just wanted to speak in favor of that. Um, we have some great employees and great technologists and it would be great to have them work in New Mexico and not leave for uh, you know, a situation like this. Thank you, Ms. Ortega. Are there any uh, board member questions for Ms. Ortega? Seeing none, uh, uh, does anyone else uh, present have any questions for Ms. Ortega? Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Or Ortega. Uh, Ms. Jones, do we have any other uh, public comment? No, sir. If I may, oh, hang on, wait, 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 one second. There is, uh, Ms. Blankley would like to make one additional comment if you would allow that. Yes, uh, and Ms. Blankley, you're still under oath, so uh, go ahead. Thank you. I wanted to offer uh, one more, uh, some additional information regarding the nuclear medicine technologists that are trained, as she stated, above and beyond in CT. Those nuclear medicine technologists have a different uh, opportunity, let's say, to train in CT that is different from an x-ray technologist, which means they really do come to our full-blown program. They have been trained for an additional year to be able to uh, deliver CT scans, again, safe and effectively. They've attended both the academic and clinical pro program for one year. And again, for an x-ray tech, that's a different option. And the reason is this, it is in our scope of practice for an x-ray technologist. So they can start performing CT scans in their scope of practice with or without an educational component. They would still need to meet the qualifications required by the ART, but the nuclear medicine techs that we've all heard about today are indeed trained for an additional year in CT. Thank you. Uh, board members have any questions for Ms. Blankley? Any members of the public have any questions for Ms. Blankley? Okay, hearing and seeing none. Uh, Ms. Jones, do we have any other public comment? No, so we don't. Okay, uh, I would like to take a five minute break. So let me propose we take a five minute break uh, and we can come back for Ms. Napolitano's uh, closing uh, statement and, uh, and see if we've had any additions to uh, anything submitted uh, uh, to Ms. Jones uh, at that point. So uh, let's, uh, let's uh, take a five minute break and return at 11 o'clock. Thank you. Okay, let's go back on the record and reconvene. Um, and just one more check, Ms. Jones, to see if we had any other uh, requests for public comment. There has been none, thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Napolitano, uh, why, don't, why don't we go to you for your closing statement? <clears throat> um, hearing Officer Honker, members of the board, the Radiation Control Bureau has put a lot of work into the proposed amendments to 20.3.20 and MAC. Um, the Bureau has involved the regulated community in the process and informed them of the proposed amendments. 
There hasn't been any opposition to the pros proposed amendments, so we ask that you consider adopting the amendments as we propose them in NMED Exhibit 1. Um, Hearing Officer Honker, I pre-filed a proposed order and statement of reasons for the board's review. It is NMED, NMED Exhibit 22 of the department's uh, notice of intent to present technical testimony. I can email the proposed order in word format uh, to the board for its review and consideration. Um, and I, I also have a transmittal form that I will need uh, Chair Sweena to sign as well. Um, so I can email that as well to the board. Um, Very yeah. well. Is, is that the conclusion of your statement? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, great. Um, Ms. Jones, I wanted to check and see if you had received any further written material for consideration. I haven't received anything yet, no, uh-uh. Okay, um, so um, I guess the question before before us is whether I should leave the record open to get, uh, we, we had a discussion of <clears throat> uh, some additional information on what other states are doing. Um, I, there seems to be a sense of urgency for the board to make a decision on this rule. So I'm kind of, I was, I was hoping some of that would have come in so we could close the record and proceed. Um, let me, let me see if the board members have any comments on, on uh, whether we should, or, or any suggestions on whether we should leave the record open and make a a decision at a later time or, or go ahead and close it. Uh, Member Bitzer. Um, I don't really see the necessity of, of uh, uh, I mean, it would be nice, I guess, on the, on the margins if we, if we saw that every other state or half the states or whatever have, have gone this way. I don't see that it's necessary. However, I mean, I, um, we've heard from a very august bunch of uh, professionals, and, and um, UNM has a, a teaching hospital has a fabulous reputation. Um, saved my my life more than once, so um, I, uh, I have nothing but respect for those folks. And uh, uh, lack of opposition uh, tells me that, and the the urgency that's that's clear and present. Uh, in my mind, outweighs everything else. We ought to go ahead and move on this while we're in session uh, today. So that's my two cents. Other thoughts? Yes, Vice Chair Trujillo Davis. Um, I <clears throat> agree with Member Bitzer. I, I would have liked to see uh, that uh, uh, additional information in the record, uh, just because there was some contradiction contradiction with NMED's witness. But I, I, I think overall, we've had some really fantastic um, witnesses speak today, all well-credentialed uh, witnesses. And so I, I'm also ready to move on, um, uh, on this decision. Okay, any other thoughts from board members? Okay, uh, I would... Uh, I'd like to thank the board and everyone present for their participate participation today. Um, the a quorum of the board members attended this hearing. Uh, the hearing notice indicated that a decision might be made at the conclusion of the hearing. The board may immediately deliberate and decide on the proposed regulatory changes at the conclusion conclusion of the hearing. Uh, the record of this public hearing is now closed. Let the record show the hearing was adjourned at 11.06 a.m. So we'll close the uh, hearing and uh, I guess I'll, I'll turn it back over to Chair Sweena for, uh, for next steps. Chair Sweena, I will um, 
since the, the decision was made to close the hearing, the hearing is closed, the record is closed, we can excuse um, Ms. Dubois um, from her services. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Samaria. Yes, thank, thanks, Ms. Thank Dubois. Thank you, Ms. Dubois, for your service. And I just want to verify, Pam, we will, we do still need to have an audio recording of the deliberations if the board elects. So we are recording, correct? Right. I'm going to keep the recorder going Great. as well as take notes. Thank you, Ms. Jones and Ms. Solaria. And, and Member Hunker, thank you for holding that hearing. Uh, much appreciated. It went very well. And we got a lot of comment and input back in. So thank you so much, Member Hunker, um, for, for that service. So well, thanks, um, thanks yeah. to everybody for, for participating. Yes, we had some really good discussion and um, and and good um, you know uh, details for us to continue with the rulemaking process. Um, sorry, I'm pu pulling back my agenda back up. I had to switch my computers <laughs> this morning. My audio went off on my other computer, so give me one second here. I would just like to note that Chair Sweena's backgrounds are pretty cool. I, they keep changing up. So I don't know <laughs> if you're the photographer there, but pretty neat backgrounds. Well, thank you, Vice Chair Trujillo Davis. Yeah, that was because one computer audio went out and then I guess my settings had a different picture. <laughs> so thank you so much. <laughs> Juggling like we all are. Um, but uh with that, um, so next on our agenda, I have uh, item A, or uh, Ms. Laurie, do we have any additional um, wrap-up items with Ms. Napolitano on? Uh, no, Chair, um, the board can elect now to go ahead and deliberate on the rule. Um, and that I believe was the last, unless I missed something, I don't think we had any other business to attend to. Um, so that's up to you and, and the board if you all want to go ahead and deliberate, um, vote on a decision now um, to adopt the proposed rules. Yes, thank you for that reminder and I apologize I've been uh, jumping from my computers here. Um, so now that we're closed, uh, members of the board, uh, what, what do you feel? Uh, yes, Member Cates. Uh, yeah, just want to, you know, I don't see any, any reason to kick this around too much or to have um, too much deliberation. I mean, you heard a lot of reasons to um, go ahead and adopt this rule. You know, they included, you know, we're a little behind the times. It's a progressive move uh, that'll help the, um, you know, the profession um, stabilize its workforce. And, you know, I was especially sympathetic to people talking about some of the expert testimony around the, uh, you know, the patient backlogs we have, it's, you know, we all have hella stories about getting access to healthcare. And, you know, it's rough enough as it is dealing with insurance companies and such. And so I mean, anything that paves the way forward in a professional way is something that, um, um, you know, we ought to, we ought to, we ought to go ahead and, and, and endorse. And uh, I, I guess I would say also there was a, um, you know, there's some tone of urgency around it as well. So I would favor, um, um, getting through some whatever necessary deliberations we need to do here and um, go ahead and get it adopted. Thank, Thank you. you for that. Thank you for that input. Member Cates, appreciate it. I see some other head nods from members of the board. Um, uh, if there's any other concerns about moving forward, um, I do have a script here provided by our legal counsel. And if we want to go that way, uh, we can, I can read that um, if we elect to deliberate immediately. Um, if that's what we're going for, um, I'm looking at our board. Yes, Member Honker. Yes, taking my hearing officer's uh, hat off now and, and board member hat on. Uh, yeah, I, 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 it, it, it seemed pretty straightforward and well supported and, and I see no reason to uh, delay action. Uh, and we should go ahead and and uh, and approve it. Thank you, Member Honker, for your input. 
Um, so, all right. Um, so uh, now that we're leaning toward that, um, the board will immediately deliberate to make a decision on the proposed amendments. If while deliberating, the board determines that additional testimony or documentary evidence is necessary for a proper decision on the proposed amendments, the board may, consistent with due process requirements, reopen the hearing for such additional evidence only. Um, <clears throat> so as we move forward, um, I think uh, I'd, I'd like to open officially with deliberations or continue with deliberations. Is that the process, Ms. Solaria? We don't need to make a motion or anything. Okay. So with that, yes, Member Bitzer. So I guess we're deliberating now. Uh, my um, my uh, my two cents, three and a half cents after inflation, I guess at this point would be uh, uh, we have uh, a finished product in front of us that uh, they spent a lot of time on. There's been a lot of collaboration uh, with interested parties. There's there's no um, opposition to speak of. Uh, in the substance of opposition. Um, there is a uh, health and safety uh, urgency to this uh, as well, as well as access to care. So um, I, I'm, I'm prepared to support this. Thank you, Member Bitzer, for your input. Yes, uh, Vice Chair Trujillo Davis. Um, I'd also like to give my support for <clears throat> these amendments as written. Uh, I, I think they addressed some uh, significant health and safety concerns as well. It does not appear to be uh, cost prohibited to the employees, uh, and there seems to be avenues for them to be able to uh, get their certification, um, especially in rural areas, which I thought was an important uh, component to address. Um, and, uh, you know, the potential job loss to the state is also something that the state of New Mexico cannot afford to, to endure. And uh, lastly, the, the benefit to the patients in scheduling and being able to uh, get their care at, uh, in a timely manner is also another thing that really stood out to me. So for those reasons, I, I support these amendments. Thank you, Vice Chair Trujillo Davis. Uh, appreciate your input and um, summary of much of the evidence and testimony that we heard today. Uh, with that, I, uh, Member Honker, Member Cates, do you have any ad additional comments or um, insights? All right. Yes, Ms. Solaria. I'll just uh, reiterate for the board that the department submitted a proposed statement of reasons with its um, intent to present technical testimony. So to the extent um, a motion is crafted, if, if, if you want to rely on the reasons proffered by the department, um, that would be good so that I would have direction to go ahead and put that together in the board's order. Thank you for that, Ms. Solaria, and for that reminder of um, needing to make sure that's part of our record and any motion and also uh, to support our any to support and for your <laughs> your task your next task um, <clears throat> with that um, I just wanted to reiterate many of the comments or support many of the comments of the board I think they're indeed what we heard this morning and uh, through the exhibits uh, and through the public um, exhibit that we got this morning or last night that um, there is support for this rule, there's a need for this rule. And I just wanna thank the department for your efforts as well in bringing this to the board um, and also the outreach and engagement and the support that uh, you also um, helped um, engage uh, with the, the various stakeholders. With that, um, I love to look to our board and look for a motion. Um, if anybody wants to step forward or if we need more discussion. 
Great. So I'm looking to the board. Yes, member Bitzer. I'll, I'll take a stab at this, I guess. Uh, I would move adoption of the proposed amendments uh, for the reasons we've discussed and heard and for uh, the reasons also stated um, in the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, in Ms. Na Ms. Napolitano's um, statement of support. There, we got thumbs up for the legal counsel. Thank you, Member Bitzer for crafting that motion. I'll second. Thank you, Member Honker for your second. Um, with that, if there's no further discussion, I'll look to Ms. Jones. Would you mind doing a roll call vote on, on Member Bitzer's motion? Yes, ma'am. Um, well, starting with Member Bitzer, how do you vote? I vote yes. And Member Cates? Yes. For the record, I'm going to call our absent... Uh, or Mr. Member Duval and Member Garcia, Member Honker. I vote yes. Vice Chair Trujillo Davis. Yes. Chair Sweena. Yes. Madam Chair, the motion passes. Thank you, Ms. Jones, uh, for for that uh, roll call vote, and uh, thank you again, Ms. Napolitano. That um, and for uh, guiding our board through this process and providing the information that we needed to make a, uh, a ruling and a decision on this. Yes, thank you to the board for taking the time to hear this. Um, the Bureau has definitely been waiting a long time for this. So <clears throat> we're very excited to, to have your support today. Thank you. You're welcome. So with that, uh, we're on our last item of our agenda this morning. And I apologize, I'm getting to back to that. So it's, it's adjournment and I look to our board if there's no further discussion. Yes, Member Honker. I move we adjourn. Thank you. Second that. Thank you, Member Bitsa for your second. With that, Ms. Jones, would you mind doing a roll call vote on Member Honker's motion to adjourn? Yes, Member Bitzer, how do you vote? I vote yes. Member Cates. <laughs> I see you. Sorry. Uh, yes. Thank you. And Member Honker? Yes. Vice Chair Trujillo Davis? Yes. Chair Sweena? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, Ms. Jones, and I appreciate all the board members and your service this morning. And um, I have a wonderful weekend. It's starting to get warm and springy out there. Uh, so I hope you get some time outdoors and enjoy the, the good weather. And I guess we'll see each other on the 11th. Yes. Take care, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>